My dearly beloved in Christ, today on the fifth Sunday of Easter, after Easter, we have the theme of prayer, the importance of prayer, the power of prayer. We read at the beginning of today's gospel the words of our Lord, Amen, amen, I say to you, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. And then our Lord goes on to complain that the apostles have not been asking enough. He says, hitherto you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. <clears throat> These words convey to us the goodness of God. God is so good that he delights to give. And he is displeased when we fail to ask. Because he has determined that he will not give us what we need until we ask for it. Even though God indeed does give us many things without our asking, our daily bread, the daily graces. But there are those special graces that we must petition. And even though he knows what we need, he has determined that he will not give it until we ask for it. We are like beggars or we should be like beggars, going before Almighty God to beg and to plead for what we need, and how he delights to give. Again, God is good, and he is so good that he, lights, he delights to give us what we need. But of course, we must pray properly. We must pray with humility and with a deep conviction of our utter dependence upon Almighty God. We must also pray with reverence and with perseverance. We can't just ask once or twice for what we need, but we must continue day in and day out to ask for the graces we need, and especially for that grace of graces, which is perseverance to the end. Perseverance in the faith unto our dying breath, what we call final perseverance. That is something we must pray for every day. Now, sometimes we pray for things that perhaps are not for the good of our souls. We want, we crave material blessings and prosperity. And that's fine to pray for health, for a job, to be able to pay our bills for the things that we need. But above all, we must pray for the spiritual goods, for the well-being of our soul, for eternal happiness with God in heaven. That is what is most important. And it has often been said that if we ask for something that is not for the good of our soul, God, who is so good and loving, will not give it to us, but instead will give us something better. Sometimes people will say, well, I pray and I don't get what I ask for. Well, maybe it is not for the good of the soul. And that is why we should always pray as our Lord did in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, Father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Anytime we pray, we ask for something, we should say, I ask for this as it is in accord with God's holy will. May God's will be done. And that is what we pray indeed in the Our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We should above all pray that we may do the holy will of God and that we will receive what we desire if it be in accord with God's holy will. So prayer is essential. Prayer is like the food of the soul. Is like the air we breathe, which we need for our physical life. Prayer is the food and the air for the well-being and the continuation of our spiritual life. Because if we ceased to pray, we would cease to live spiritually. We would die without the grace of God. But for the grace of God, where would we be? So let us live lives of prayer and let us pray well. It is not so much a matter of how much time we spend in prayer, but how well we pray. 
with attention, with reverence, with devotion, and again, with a humble heart, asking for what we need for our salvation. This past couple weeks, I've been reading a book on the life of Mother Seton, Elizabeth Ann Seton, who was a convert to the Catholic religion. <clears throat> and it amazes me to realize what some individuals had to do to surmount the obstacles that she had to surmount. I would imagine most of us here, maybe even perhaps nearly all of us, were raised in the faith, baptized in the Catholic Church as infants. But think about the obstacles that have to be surmounted by a non-Catholic who is seeking the truth and then comes to a knowledge that the Catholic Church is the true church founded by our Lord. Elizabeth Seton was born in 1774, just a year before the Revolutionary War began, in New York City. And she was raised in a prominent Episcopalian family. And after her husband died, leaving her with five young children, she began to understand that the Catholic Church was the true church. Actually, when her husband was quite ill, the doctors prescribed an ocean trip, said he should go on a, on a voyage. They thought that would be for his health. Well, he had some business partners in Italy. And so she went there and she was so amazed to see that they went to Mass every day. And she was moved, she was influenced by their piety and began to earnestly search for the truth. And her prayers led her to the Catholic religion. And she finally was converted, was received into the church, and then back home in New York, then the persecution began. Her Protestant friends and relatives saying, what are you doing? How can you enter that church? And to read about the persecution that she endured, and yet she persevered. Many of us have not had it anywhere near so difficult. So the grace of God will be there for anyone who is earnestly searching for the truth and prays to be led to the truth. The grace of God will be there. We should be so grateful for our Catholic faith, for all that God has given to us. But let us not take it for granted. Remember, we must continue to pray, continue to persevere, and to ask every day for what we need. So let us never forget the goodness of God who delights so much in giving us what we need if we but ask for it. God is so good and he will give us all we need. As our Lord said in today's gospel to the apostles, why do you not ask? It is as though to say, I want to help you. All I want you to do is to say, please, to ask. Let us ask for much. Let us have a great trust in the goodness of God and confidence that he will give us what we need for the good of our souls if we but ask for it perseveringly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.